Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This video tutorial is for this beautiful bag called the Carry All Bag, and it's by KMG Handmade. This bag comes in two sizes. You have the choice between the small or the large. The large is what I made in this tutorial. So you do get to choose between which one you wanna make. There's lots of awesome features of this bag, but before we get discussing them, there's just a couple of important things I wanted to go over. First of all, this tutorial is filmed like a sew along. So what I mean by that is no parts are sped up, no parts are cut out. You see me make this whole bag. So if you find that the tutorial is a little too long, you can speed up the video or you can fast forward to the parts that you need to see. There are times where I will go off camera and sew things. So for example, there's two handles. I show you how to make one and then I go off the camera and I sew the other one. And that's just because I feel that you don't need to sit and watch me sew two or three or four things. It just helps with the time and the length of the tutorial. The other thing is, is I don't give any measurements. I show no pattern pieces, no rulers, no nothing on camera. And that's for the protection of the designer and also because I film during testing. So if something changes, it doesn't affect my tutorial. You're able to you know, continue following along. So you will need to have your pattern either open beside you on another device printed or on this same device that you're watching this tutorial on. So now that I've gone over those few important things, let's get started discussing some of the features of this bag. So as you can see, it has rolled handles, which are really nice. And I just like it because it adds a bit more extra strength to the handle. Now I did use co uh, cork for mine and quilting cotton, so a mix, but you can make this bag in any material you want, all vinyl, you can make it in all quilting cotton, anything you want. But I really like how the uh, cork feels on the handles. There are some pattern pieces that do need to be cut in raw edged material, so you'll want to pay attention to that when you are cutting out your materials. Then we have these lovely accents on the sides here, which I really like. It just adds some extra feature to the bag and it draws your eye in. There is also an option for a crossbody strap, so you can omit the handles and just have your crossbody strap, or you can omit the strap and just have handles here. The top of the bag does open with a double zipper, so it helps it open nice and wide. And then when you look inside the bag, we have a slip pocket on the one side, and then we have the zipper pocket with our key minder on the other side. So great for keeping anything that you don't want loose in the bottom of your bag inside of, and you can clip your keys to this so that you're not looking for your keys at the bottom of your bag. And as you can see, the bag is very roomy. The bag is pretty much the same size as Buddy, which is kind of funny. I'm surprised she's not trying to get into it. The one thing I like about the slip pocket is because we've got it lined with this cork, it acts almost like a protective barrier. So it acts as some extra padding here and some extra um, security to if you put your phone in here. I also like it because as I mentioned in the tutorial, say you have a water bottle in here and a little bit of water gets there, it'll protect your device because it kind of acts like that waterproof barrier. It's just a really nice design feature that I really like. And if you don't have rivets where all these rivets are added, you don't have to add them. I walk you through that in the tutorial on what to do if you don't have rivets. So that is the bag, really nice big bag. Again, cross body strap that you can wear on your shoulder or you can wear it cross body. I still haven't pressed mine because I just finished the tutorial. So I still haven't pressed my bag. So I do still need to press it to help it get its really lovely barrel shape of a bag. So again, this is the carry all bag by KMG Handmade. I promise it is a really fun sew and it really doesn't take very long. And again, you can make it in any material you want. You also have the option to cut these so that you can use directional print. Kristen does give the instructions for that. So that's what I did. We use a directional print and then you sew it together in the bottom. And then you have the bottom top stitched along there so that you have a really nice front and back of the bag so that one side is not upside down. It would be great for some embroidery, maybe a panel or something if you want to fussy cut something there. So just a couple of extra features that you can add to the bag to really make this bag your own. And again, it does come in the two sizes. The small is great for, you know, if you like a smaller bag. And this is great for people like me who really like really big bags and carry a lot with them. So again, this is the Carry All Bag by KMG Handmade and let's get started making our bag. 
So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because oftentimes designers give information regarding different interfacings you can use and also maybe give information regarding different materials you can use. For, so for example, if you're using a material like a vinyl, a cork, or a faux leather, those pattern pieces may need to be cut out differently. And also there's also information that is given in the pattern for pattern pieces that you may be cutting out that may need to be cut with raw edge a material that can be left raw edge. So for example, in this pattern, we have a pattern piece, the zipper overlay here, that needs to be cut from a material that can be left raw edged because you don't want it to fray on you. So these things are very important to make note of before you get not only picking your fabric, but cutting all your fabric out. So once you've read through the entire pattern and you've made note of that, you're able to go ahead and pick out all your materials and your fabrics and get started on cutting everything out. Now I've already gone ahead and cut everything out here as you can see on my table and I also go and place all my hardware that I need into a little baggie. My zippers are also cut. Normally I will label them with where the zipper is going to go but in this case the two zippers are, are extremely different in length so I'm not really concerned about getting confused. I'll know which one I need to grab when I get to that part. But I also have, because this pattern has rolled handles, I also have my cording in here and then again all my hardware so that it's ready to go and I don't have to go searching for it and it just keeps it all together so I don't lose anything. The other thing I've done is I've already attached my zippers to my zipper tapes so that, or zipper poles, sorry, to my zipper tapes so I don't need to do that after. I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to add a zipper pole to a zipper tape. I'll link that in the description below. The other thing I've done because I did read ahead was I've made some marks on some of my pattern pieces. So I'm just going to find one here. You can't really see it, but on my lining, I've made a mark for where my zipper pocket or my slip pocket will go. So I've gone ahead and I've made the marking for that. Some markings I can't make right now because we have to wait until we've constructed our bag to make those markings. I've also made the marking for my handle down the center here. So I've gone ahead and done that. And the reason is I don't show any measurements. So no ruler, no pattern pieces, no nothing on camera. That's for the protection of the designer, but also because I film during testing. So if anything is changed after it's been tested and before it's released to you, there's no issue with my tutorial, nothing is affected by it. So there's no seam allowance measurements given, nothing. So that means you will need to have your pattern open on another device or printed, whatever you're most comfortable with so that you can follow along. Another thing I've done is I've already pressed my strap so I have done that. I will show you how to do that, but I just went ahead and did that so that it's a little bit less getting up and down. And again, more markings made on my pattern pieces. Another thing I do is I mark the pattern piece with the corresponding letter so that when we get to that step, I know what the letter is and it doesn't cause me any confusion. And I also have some center marks made on some of my pattern pieces. Again, I couldn't make center marks on everything because there are some pieces that have to be constructed before I can make marks on them. So I will need to go off camera at points and make some markings so that I can have those markings for when we're going ahead and assembling the bag. So for this bag, I am using a mix of quilting cotton and cork. It is um, domestic machine friendly, so I'm not super worried about it. However, you want to use materials and the needle and thread that you know are good for your machine and that your machine can handle. Always use materials you know your machine can handle. So with that said, now that everything is cut out and I have my markings made and things labeled, we're ready to get started making our carry-all bag. So I'm just going to put this to the side. So the very first thing with this pattern that I wanted to make note of, which is why it's important for you to read through the pattern, I'm gonna bring this back over. It's a little bit hard to grab at everything. The very first thing is cutting out your main body A. Now, Kristen does have a method in the pattern for cutting the material if you're using a directional fabric. I know this one doesn't really look too directional, but I did cut it the way you would if you were using a directional print. So you can see my lining fabric is directional because it has little hearts all over it. And on the pattern piece, there is a mark for where you will place it if you're going to be using directional print or for where you're using it if you're not using directional print. 
So if you are not using a directional print, you can cut pattern piece A out on the fold, which means it'll be one big long piece like this because you cut the pattern piece out on the fold. You'll have one big piece like that. Now, if you're doing as I am because I've used a directional print, you will cut two pieces out using the pattern piece and watch for the instructions on the pattern piece for how to cut your fabrics out if you're using a directional print. You really want to pay attention to that because you don't want to cut it out on the fold and then when this wraps around the bag, you end up having one side that's upside down and one side that's in the correct direction. And I'm just moving this a little bit out of the way. This is just Buddy's little bed that she likes to sleep on when she comes up on the table. So because I have cut these this way, we have to assemble this together. So what we're going to do is take our two A pieces. Now, if you didn't cut yours like this, you can just skip this part and move ahead to the next part. I do want to show this on camera because I wanted everyone to see how this gets done so that nobody is confused with it. And if you're using one on the fold, then there's nothing you need to do right now until we move to the next step. So what you do is you take your pattern piece A piece and you lay it one piece right side up and another piece right sides down. So they're pretty sides touching. And you need to remember which one is the top and which one is the bottom. And the top has the smaller edge and the bottom is this thicker, wider edge here. And as you can see, the top is the thinner edge. So I know which one's the top and which one's the bottom. So I'm placing them right sides together. And then I'm going to add some clips along this long bottom edge. And you wanna line everything up nicely. So clip your corners together first and then clip the rest of the way so clip it all the way across the rest of the way and you want to line up those long edges so make sure everything's aligned and once you have it all lined up and clipped in place you can then take this to your machine and sew it with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So we'll sew across this bottom edge here with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And make sure you're using a stitch length that you like to use for when you're sewing structural seams of your bags together. And again, I'm using the seam allowance that's given in the pattern for sewing these together. to backstitch it start and stop. Once you have that sewn together, we're then going to take this and press that seam open. So you want to press it. Now you can take this to your iron and press it if you want. I'm just going to finger press it. And then I'll take my seam roller that I always forget I have. And I'm going to seam roll that seam open. This way here I don't have to get up and go to my, my iron. Not that it's far, it's just right behind me. a little less getting up and down for me that's all so I'm just pressing this seam open and if you want say you're making this out of a vinyl or something that you can't press and you really want to make sure that this seam stays open you can use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place and that'll just keep everything pressed open and pressed in place. And I'm just gonna run my nail across it. There we go. So now I have my one big panel all sewn together just like that. And I'm going to repeat that right now for my lining just to make sure that it's done because I did do this to my lining as well. So again, place them right sides together, clip the edges, first and then clip the rest of the way across and 
You want to make sure everything's lined up. I'll take this to my iron and press it after just so that I can get them pressed really nice. I just didn't want to get up and press the other one. So again, sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Sew all the way across. So there's that. I'm trimming all my threads now. And then we'll press this open. And you'll do the same thing, press those seams open. Now, back to my exterior here. So once you have the exterior together, and if you didn't sew it together like I just did, you will have one big piece like this where there is no seam in the middle. You want to take your interfacing, and I'm using a foam here, and you want to attach it to your bag, to your exterior here, all the way around. And I'm going to use some basting, or not some basting tape, some double-sided sticky tape that I have to place this, to hold this down. So first I'll give it a spray with some temporary adhesive to get it stuck down. And then I'm going to lift up the edges and I'm going to put basting tape, not basting tape, sorry, double-sided tape along the edges to really help hold it in place. I just like using the double-sided tape to hold my foam down because sometimes I find even with the basting spray, it still lifts up a little bit. So with the double-sided tape around the edges, and I won't go all the way around all the edges totally, I don't think I will. I'll just sort of do it, you know, little spots at here, at a, in an area, sorry. Across here, I will go all the way across on these edges, but here I'll just, you know, sort of a little gap, a little gap, just to kind of help hold it in place. So I'm not going to do that on camera because I don't think you need to sit and watch me attach my foam on camera. So I'm going to attach my foam, I'm going to press my lining open, and then when I come back, we're going to then take this, and if you've created your A panel by sewing the two pieces together, we're going to top stitch on either side of the line. And the foam being there, you'll be stitching through the foam, which will also hold the foam in place a little bit more too if you're using a sew-in foam. Now you can use whatever interfacing you want. If you're making the large, Kristen did make hers with a fleece and found that it was a little too flimsy. But again, this is your bag, so use whatever materials you want. If you want it to be a little bit more of a slouchier bag, then by all means, definitely use that fleece. And with fleece, what's nice if you're using fusible is you just attach it with your iron. You just heat it up and attach it that way. So I'm going to go do that off camera and then I'll come back and we will continue with constructing our bag. So now that I've gotten the seam here in the middle where we join the two main panel A pieces together, I have it pressed for my lining and I also attached my foam to my exterior. And as I mentioned, I just used some double-sided tape here so you can see I'm pulling it away. And that's what I use because I use a sew-in foam so the double-sided tape will hold it in place for me while I'm sewing my bag together. So now what we need to do is top stitch down the center of these panels right on either side of this seam here where we stitched the two main panels together. Now again, if you haven't stitched your panels together and you're using one big piece so you cut these on the fold, you can actually just draw a line down the center if you want to have that center stitching on the bottom of your bag, or you can just skip this step altogether. It's really your choice for how you want the end of your bag to look when you're done making it. So I'm just going to top stitch down either side of the line. So I've increased my stitch length to the length I like to use for top stitching. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop as well. And another thing about stitching this 
what it's doing is it's actually going to also hold your foam in place for you as well. So it's kind of nice that you're doing this extra stitching here, especially if you're using a sew-in foam. So there's one side. And I will repeat this for the lining fabric as well. Now you'll notice that I have to roll it to fit it under because it is big, it's wider than the bed of my machine here. So you do have to roll it up. Now we'll cut all our threads. And you can't really see my stitching because I'm using a dark thread but I have stitched on either side of the line. Oh yeah, you can see it there. The lighting kind of gets it. You can actually see it better here too. You can see that there's two lines of stitching. I'm just going to make sure my camera didn't get unfocused, but I have two lines of stitching. And as I was saying, that also helps hold my foam in place as well. So I'm going to repeat that for the lining. I'm going to stitch on either side of the line or of the seam. Now, you don't really have to do this with the lining but I'm going to just for that extra security and it helps hold that seam down as well. Make sure that as it just happened here that nothing else is under your needle and presser foot as you're stitching. It's more of a decorative stitching here on the lining. And again, you can do this even if you've cut your panel as one full piece. You just draw the line down the center here and stitch on either side of the line using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I just like the stitching for the lining in the exterior and the lining especially because it helps hold that seam nice and flat here as well, which makes it easier when we get to the final construction. Everything's flat and it'll hold everything in place, helping reduce bulk as well. So make sure all those threads are snipped. You don't want peekaboo threads later. So everything's snipped. So now we have our foam attached. We have our panels connected, foam attached, and they are top stitched. Now what we need to do is attach our side H pieces. So that's these half circles here. And these are going to be attached to your exterior. So move your lining out of the way. Take your completed exterior. I'm just making sure it's flat. Now sometimes I have to readjust and that's okay. That's the nice thing about the double-sided tape as well. So now we need to take these half circles and we need to place them here where these openings are along the sides. So this is going to be the tops right here when the bag is completed and this is your bottom where we just stitched. So where these little side cutouts are right here and right here, this is where these H panels will be connected. So we're going to line them up. So I have center marks, you'll see here. Sorry, I've got the camera in my way here, or the bag in my way. So there's a center mark here, and I've also got a center mark on the H panel. I'm going to line those up so that I have this nice and centered. Because I want the same amount of space on each side. So clip it all together. And again, I use sew-in foam, so again, my panels here, my H panel, to get the foam attached to it, I have used the double-sided tape as well. And I'm making the large bag, so if my panels look a little bit bigger than yours, that's because I'm making the large. I'm just clipping them together so it's going to look like this. You're going to have some pieces that look like that. And we're also going to attach them to the lining as well because the lining also has H pieces 
that need to be attached. However, I will do those ones off camera. I'm just going to show you the exterior because it's the exact same thing for the construction of the lining and the exterior when you're attaching the H panels. So you don't need to watch me do the lining and exterior on camera. So we're going to sew these with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you're sewing just along this straight edge between the top and bottom flaps here. So just between the top and bottom flaps. So where these are, you'll sew, and I'm showing you from this side because it's easier to see. You'll sew from this corner here going all the way to that corner, which means you're not sewing all the way to the end of the H. You're actually stopping, and you can see I've made a mark because I know where I need to stop on my H piece. See if you can get it. So you can see there I've made a mark, so I know where to start and stop because those marks line up with the corners here. So you're sewing just to these corners, so start and stop. Now make sure you've switched your stitch length back to the length you like to use when you're stitching a bag together. And my needle is unthreaded. So I'm just going to quickly rethread that needle. There we go. And we will stitch this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And you're just sewing between those corners. And right now, I'm stitching right beside that foam, or you should be stitching right beside whatever interfacing you have chosen to use for your bag. So you won't be sewing over it. You're just sewing between it. And I'll show you what I mean. So here it is, and you can see that H on the ends here are not sewn because I'm pulling them over here. And you can see on this side, it's a little bit easier. Well, it's harder to see because the foam is there, but I've stopped. Well, you can see my back stitching there, and you can see my back stitching here. I've stopped and started right where these corners are. So one more time, starting in that corner, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if it's easy, do what I did and make those marks on those H panels so that you know where to start and stop and you don't forget. And I'm going right beside my foam. So it's almost like it's going to look like my stitches are sort of buried underneath my foam. So again, trim my threads. And again, right to the ends here, the H panels are not sewn at the ends. And it'll make sense later when we go to do the rest of the bag. Now, there's also something else we need to do. We need to take this seam here for the H panel that we just connected, and we need to press it towards the A panel. So all that seam allowance gets pressed towards the A panel. And I know it's going to seem a little bit wonky right now because we do have some of this all attached, but you just wanna take it and press it towards the A panel. So just like that, press the seam allowance, and then we're going to top stitch just between these two again these two corners here where we've stitched the H panel so you're just top stitching from one corner to the other corner not all the way to the end so again where we've started stitching here and where we stop stitching is the same place we're going to top stitch so press that seam towards the A panel and then top stitch it and you're top stitching on top of the A panel and if you don't want back stitching, you can take the threads, make long thread tails, and then we can tie them through and pull them off to the back. And then you won't have any back stitching there as well. So look where your corner is. And I know I didn't sew these ones. You're probably wondering, oh, but Michelle, you forgot to sew those. I'm gonna go off camera and sew those. I just figure you don't need to sit here and watch me sew a few more of these. That's gonna get kind of boring for you. So again, I'm not going to backstitch, I'm just starting right there and I'm sewing along the A panel because I've pressed my seams towards that A panel. Making sure they're pressed under as I go along and I'm going to stop as soon as I get to that next corner where I started stitching. 
and I'm there now. So lift up my needle, pull my threads out, cut long thread tails, and then flip over to the wrong side and you pull on this back thread back here and it causes that loop that you can pull up and pull your thread to the back. And this way here, you don't have any back stitching if you don't want it on the front of your machine, on the front of your bag, sorry. Now, if your print is kind of like mine and it's busier and then you're using a thread that matches, you could back stitch and it won't show it if you want. You don't have to do it this way. This is just an option I thought I'd mention just in case you, you know, you're using a lighter fabric and a darker thread to make it stand out more. And be careful, don't do what I did, which is pull too hard because your threads will break. So again, I'm pulling this and you can see there's a little loop here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. You can see the little loop. I'm just putting my sharp end of my scissors in and it pulls it out. And then I have the two threads. I can knot them together a few times. Another thing you can do is add a bit of fray stop or glue or anything like that to the knot and that'll help secure the knot a little bit more if you want, just for some extra security. So just like that, cut your threads. I'm going to make sure that knot is still there. Yeah, it is. So that's how that looks when we've top stitched it. So it presses it over and it helps to reduce the bulk later and we don't get puckers up here when we go to finally attach all this. You won't get a lot of puckers or anything here. And that's how that looks. So you need to repeat that for all four. So again, sew it in place just from the corner to the corner here. So the, from the top to the bottom where the flaps are, just from corner to corner and then push the seam allowance towards the A panel and top stitch again between those corners. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to finish sewing these two and top stitching the three, and then I'll repeat that whole process again for my lining panel. So again, same thing, you'll attach your lining panels, and I don't even know where my lining panel H pieces are. They're gone. No, nope, they're right here. And same thing for the lining H panel pieces, and I'll sew those with the seam allowance push them to the A panel, and then I will top stitch. So I'm going to go off camera because again, I don't wanna make this tutorial much longer than it needs to be. I don't feel you need to sit and watch me do all this. So I'll go off camera, I'll finish all of that, attaching each two A's, and then we'll come back and we will continue with constructing our bag. So I have the A and H's all connected and they're all top stitched. So now we can put these to the side. So again, I did that with my exterior and my lining. So it's all complete. Now we're going to move along and we're going to prep our zippers. So we need our zipper with the two pulls attached. And this is going to be the bigger zipper, so your longer zipper, the one for your main panel, or the one that's going to be attached for the exterior, sorry. So place all your pulls onto your zipper. So the longer zipper will have two pulls, so they'll be facing each other like this. And I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to put pulls onto a zipper tape. So I will link that below in the description so that if you're new to using zipper tape and you're not sure how to put zipper pulls on them, you can watch that. So just pause this video and open that link in another um, tab so that you can be able to view it and see how to get your zipper pulls on. The shorter zipper tape we're going to put to the side for now. And we're just going to work with this longer zipper tape right now. So the first thing we need to do after we have our zipper pulls attached is take our zipper tab C pieces, so that's these small little pieces, and we need to attach them to each end of the zipper. So we're going to place one so it is right sides down against the right side of the zipper and clip it in place. And you're clipping it along the short edge. So the raw edge of your zipper tab is lining up with the raw edge of the zipper tape. So just like that. Then we're going to take another zipper tab and we're going to place it right sides together against the wrong side of the zipper tape. So just line it up just like that. So get everything all nicely lined up. And then repeat that process again for the other side. So right side of the zipper, so the pretty side of the zipper tape against the right side of the zipper, just like that. Line it up so you'll line up those raw straight edges. 
the shorter edge, just like that. And then you'll take the remaining piece and line that up right sides together against the wrong side of the zipper tape and line everything up again and clip it in place. Now sometimes what I like to do is when I add the first one, I like to baste it in place so I don't have to worry about anything shifting. And that's just a personal preference. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go with it this way. I'm adding some extra clips. So now we're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you're going to be sewing through two zipper tabs and the zipper tape that is sandwiched in between. And don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you like to use when you're constructing a bag. So there's one side. Now we'll sew the second side. We'll clip our threads. So clip all the threads so you don't get peekaboo threads later. I'm just going to remove all my clips that are remaining. Now we're going to fold these back so the tabs are now going to be wrong sides together. And you're welcome to take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm not going to take it to my iron. I'm just going to press it with my fingers. And we're going to top stitch the edges here where the zipper tab is on the zipper tab using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So increase your stitch length for top stitching. Repeat that for the second side. And again, trim all your threads so there's no peekaboo threads later. So just trim them all away. Just like that. Now we need to add double-sided tape to both long edges of the zipper. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape. On the wrong side, I just had to look and make sure on the wrong side of the zipper tape. So flip your tape upside down. You're looking at the wrong side right now. And we're going along the long edges of the zipper tape with our double sided tape. So all the way along the edge, just like that, press it in place. go. So again, this is on the wrong side of the zipper tape. And I'm just pressing it down, making sure it's pressed in place. But you can see, well, you can't really see because I'm using white tape, but you can see it here. I started at the tab and I end at the other side of the tab. And you may be wondering what I was doing. It looked like I was folding my uh, double sided tape. And that is just because what I'm doing is, is I'm folding the double sided tape back onto itself. And the reason for that is once you fold it back like that onto itself, it's stuck together. You pull this one little piece up and this creates a tab here where there is no tape attached. And so that once I put it down on any surface, it makes it easier because this tape is stuck down and this tab, I can just pull it away, making it easier to remove the double sided tape. And that's just something I've been doing for as long as I've been using double sided tape. It just makes it really easy to get the tape off because you're not trying to get it where the tape ends here and try to peel this back. Instead, you have a little tab that makes it easier to pull the double-sided tape paper off. So now we're going to stick this zipper off to the side for now. And if you haven't already, again, attach your pull to the remaining zipper tape. Now, next, we're going to work on our zipper pockets. So we do need that zipper tape I just put off to the side. So we need that zipper tape and we need our zipper pocket. 
So our zipper pocket piece that we need is going to be, and I just want to make sure I'm grabbing the right piece. I can't see my cutting chart here. G. So you need piece G, one of your pieces. So you're going to place piece G, the lining zipper pocket, right sides up on your table. So you're seeing the pretty side of your fabric. You're going to take that zipper tape and place it so that it is right sides up as well. And you want the pull to be going in the direction you want it for when your bag is in use. Now, I'm just going to put it down so that my pull is going to the left. That's totally fine with me. I'm cool with that. But you want to have it whichever way you want it to be when your bag is constructed and you're using your bag. Sometimes I make the bags for me, sometimes I don't. So oftentimes when it's a pocket, I'm not really concerned about which way the pocket is being closed because oftentimes, I don't know if you're like me, when I use my bag, I, I have it sort of on my shoulder or on a counter or something when I'm going into it. So it doesn't really bother me with the pocket. More important, the top zipper be closing a specific way. Anyways, so now that this is attached, so again, the lining zipper pocket piece is right sides up. Your zipper tape is right sides up. So the zipper, is wrong sides against the pretty side of your fabric. We're going to then base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, ensure your stitch length is at the length you use for constructing a bag. Now, when you approach your pull here, you're going to notice the tape kind of creates this little like bump like this. If you can see my hand, there's like a little bump where the pull is. You want to move your zipper pull out of the way and that'll help create that nice flat edge again, keeping everything nicely lined up at the top of your zipper pocket. And don't forget to backstitch. Cut your threads. For some reason, mine kind of got eaten up on the other side, but that's okay. Just like that. So that's how that looks so far when you have just one side attached. I'm going to press this one side for now. Just finger press it with my hands. And that makes it so that now I'm looking at the wrong side of my tape, but if you leave it, you're looking at right side of tape, right side of the um, pocket. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge here at the bottom that's not attached to our tape yet, and we're going to bring it up to meet the edge of the zipper tape that has nothing attached to it. So edge of, bottom edge of pocket, bring it up to the edge of the zipper tape that has nothing attached to it. Clip it in place along that edge. And you can do what I do and did and just flip it around so you can see it. Clip along the long edge. So just like this, now we're going to, again, base stitch that. And don't forget, when you approach that zipper pull, slide it out of the way so that it keeps that top edge nice and straight and you don't have that little lump there. And always make sure your needle is down anytime you lift up your presser foot. You don't want to accidentally pull your fabric or your zipper or whatever you're sewing out from under your needle. So trim your threads. So that's how it looks right now. We have this little round tube and I'm just going to press the other side just to make sure it's nice and flat. I'm just finger pressing it. So now with the pocket flat and you want to be looking at it with the zipper so that the zipper is at the top here. And again, have it so that your pull is facing the direction you want it to be when the bag is constructed. Now you may need to scroll through to see if we're putting the pocket on the front of the bag or on the back of the bag. So you know which way the pocket needs to be open. So if it's going to be the back of the bag and you want the pocket to be opening this way, then you want to make sure that you're checking it. And that's what I do when I make a bag. I'll literally put the bag against my body or wherever it is. So if I'm like, oh, the pocket's at the back of the bag, I'll put it against my body so I know where the back is. And then I can test it out and put the pocket wherever I want. If it's the front of the bag, then I know it's going to be like this against my body. And I know that the zipper, if I want it to open going towards the back of my body, then I know I need to move the zipper pull that way. So I hope that makes sense and I didn't just confuse everyone. So that's just something I do. It's kind of like a little test to see if I have it in the right direction. So once you have this chosen to be in the right direction or you've picked the direction you want your pull to go in, 
flatten the pocket so the zipper is at the top. We're then going to take our zipper, and I've created a little crease here because I've pressed it flat, and we're going to cut along the bottom edge of that pocket, just like that. So that's the bottom edge of the pocket. I've just cut it so we now have two pieces of a pocket. So when you open this up, that's what it'll look like. Now, something I'm going to do, just a little tip, I'm going to write a T at the top because this has to be at the top when we go to construct the zipper pocket. And I wanna make sure, because you want the longer edge when it's brought down to meet the edge, bottom edge of my pocket. So now that I have that, we can now take this and add the double-sided tape to the long edges of the zipper tape. So we're going to put it over those stitches we created. So see these stitches here that I have? The zipper tape is going right, or the double-sided tape is going right over the edges of the stitches. And again, remember I created that little tab? So that's going to be helpful when I go to pull the tape off the double-sided tape. So again, I just take the end of the tape and just fold it back onto itself a wee little bit and then pull it back and there's nothing on this end right here where my nail is so there's no tape right on that end and that just makes it easier for pulling the tape off later. Just a little tip I like to wanted to share with everyone. Make sure your tape is pushed down. Place this pocket off to the side for now and then grab out your zipper overlay and I don't know where mine went. Um, I just need to find my zipper overlay. Kind of made a mess here. So there it is. There's my zipper overlay. Now we need to take our zipper overlay and we need to apply some double-sided tape as well as our half inch swivel hook, which I don't know where mine went. There it is. Our little swivel hook here, the small swivel hook. So. Once you have this, we're going to slide this onto the edge of the tab and you can use some double-sided tape to help hold the tab up in place. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put a little piece of double-sided tape there and make sure it's stuck down. and then fold this up. So you'll take the tab here that's at the bottom and you'll fold it up and you wanna fold it up so it lines up with this edge here of the zipper window opening. So you're gonna line up those two edges and just press it in place just like that and that double-sided tape will hold it in place just like that. And that's just how we make our zipper overlay key minder. Now we need to add some double-sided tape along these two long edges of our overlay. So add the double-sided tape to the center. Oops. Just right down the center, just like that. And remember to press it down. So I have the double-sided tape down both long edges. So I'm going to take this now and place this also off to the side. And if you could see my little area here, it's such a mess. Looks like I'm very disorganized. That's why I can't find anything. <laughs> now we're going to grab our slip pocket G. So the last slip pocket G piece. And we need to fold it in half so that the bottom raw edges meet. And then we will use some clips. So take your clips and you're going to place it along just the side edges only. So only along the side edges. You're going to leave the top edge unclipped and open. And then we will then mark, so there's a measurement you need to make from the side edge over and make a mark on that edge and then you'll sew along these marks that you made. And I had already made those marks. As I mentioned previously, I went ahead and made my marks so that I don't have to go off camera as much. Trim all your threads.
Now, what we want to do is just snip these corners just on an angle. Be careful not to clip your stitches. So just like that. So you'll see I've snipped my corners. Now we're going to turn this so it is right sides out. And I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give it a really good press just to get it pressed nice and flat. And then we can continue on with creating our slip pocket. So my slip pocket is all pressed nicely. Now we need to grab the slip pocket accent and it's this piece here and it's piece I. So I have done this with a raw edge material as instructed in the pattern. So what you're now going to do is lay the raw accent piece laying wrong side up. So it's looking at the wrong side. So my pretty side is against my work surface. You're then going to take your slip pocket and align the folded edge of your slip pocket. So this edge that's folded with the bottom edge of your slip pocket raw edge accent piece. So align those bottom edges and then clip it in place along those edges. So it'll be just like this. Now I'm going to trim a few of these threads here that are sort of hanging off. Just give it a little haircut, just like that. And now that we have that all lined up with the bottom edge. You can put a couple clips if you want on the sides just to help hold it in place as well. So that's what I'm going to do is just put a clip there and a clip there. And now we need to take the top edge and fold it over the raw edge of the slip pocket. And you want to fold it so that the raw edge is right where that fold is done. So you see how it's sandwiched in between and the top raw edge is right at that fold. So fold it over and that's enclosing your raw edges. And this is just a different technique that Kristen is teaching us and giving us something different for the bag. Now, the nice thing about this is it sort of adds a layer of protection. So say when your um, water bottle, for example, is in your bag, if it leaks a little bit, so this is going to be the side that's going to be facing out into your bag, and this will be inside. So say your phone is in here, so this is against the bag, and your phone is in this pocket and your water sort of spills and hits this. Because you've used a vinyl, a cork, full leather, leather, anything like that, it kind of adds like a barrier or a protection for anything that spills. It also adds a little extra protection for padding as well because it's giving that extra strength here so that if you do put your phone in here, it kind of helps protect your phone. So it's a nice little um, design feature. I really like it. You could even use, you know, the TPUs, a jelly vinyl, anything like that as well to um, line the back of this pocket like this, like how we've done this here. You can even use that. A clear vinyl would be really cool. Just keep in mind this top edge here where the raw edge is of your material, so your quilting cotton that was used for your slip pocket. You will see that raw edge, which it'll still be concealed within the vinyl, but you will see the raw edge. So you may want to make sure you really trim that up really good and make sure there's no like straggling um, threads or anything so that you don't see it as much. So now that we've folded that over, we're now going to stitch this in place and you can add the double-sided tape to the top edge of the raw edge before you fold it over, which sorry, I skipped that. I'm going to add the double-sided tape now. And what that's going to do is just help hold that in place as we folded it over. So I've unclipped it. I'm going to add my double-sided tape here. I don't want that drying out, so I'm going to stick it back together. And see, remember I said about the tab, how easy that comes off when I pull that off? So this acts as an accent when it's on the outside of our bag, as I was saying, and then inside is fully lined with my cork. 
So just like that. So now we need to top stitch this accent piece along this edge here, the bottom here that's folded over. So along right here along this edge, we need to top stitch that using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So switch to your top stitch length you like to use and top stitch straight across. Don't forget to clip all your little threads. And what's nice is when you go to the other side, so when you're using this pocket and you look at the pocket from the inside, you'll have that nice top stitch edge as well. And then you have it top stitched there. So it's a really pretty little accent feature. I really like this. I think it's a really neat idea, especially like I was saying, when you have your water bottle in your bag, if some water maybe spills out, it'll help protect your phone if your phone is in there. And it also just helps protect anything that you do have in this pocket, just as an extra layer of protection because the material that we use, the raw edge material, is a little bit thicker than your typical quilting cotton. So now we're going to put this to the side and I'm going to leave it all clipped like that while I put it off to the side. I don't think I need that many on the side, but I'll leave it quick clipped like that. I'll take these clips off because it's already held in place. So I'm going to place this off to the side for now. Now we're going to make our base piece. So you need to grab your base J pieces. So it's these two pieces. And you can mark your seam allowance along each long edge along each edge. I'm, I didn't get to do that. I forgot, but I do know what the seam allowance is. So I will just sew this with my seam allowance. So clip these together so that they are right sides together. So clip them all together all the way around. And we're going to sew all around the four edges of these base J pieces, except we're going to leave an opening for turning this right sides out through. So you want to leave an opening. Now, what you can do is you can mark on the pattern piece where you wanna leave the opening, just to remind yourself to leave the opening there. So I've just made some marks. You can see them right there and there. So I've made some marks and that'll just help remind me that that's where I need to stop and start sewing. So I'm going to sew these and I like to do this where I start up off the edge of the fabric and I go up to until I get to where my seam allowance is. So I will spin this around until I'm at my seam allowance. So I'm there now and then I back stitch again. And when I get to the corners, I also like to backstitch. And the reason for this is it just adds a little bit of extra security in my corners for when I'm poking those corners out. And it's a lot of moving your material around, making sure you're getting the right seam allowance as you're sewing. And again, I'm just sewing in the corners, I'm backstitched there, and that's just a personal preference. You do not need to do that. That is not a requirement of the pattern. That's just a personal thing that I do. And then I stitch off the edge of my material, and all that's doing is that helps when we go to turn this right sides out, because it trains my material for where it needs to go. Now we're going to cut the corners. So I'm snipping the corners. Turn this right sides out. Now you can take this after right now to your iron after we get it all turned right sides out, but I'm not going to yet because we're going to slip that piece of stabilizer that we cut for the base inside. So when I'm fusing that, I'll just make sure I press everything nice. So I'm using my turning tool to poke out my corners. So we're poking out all the corners, just taking my time. And be careful that you don't push too hard with your turning tool because you don't want to break those stitches or push a hole through your base piece here. So 
as I was saying, where I did that sew off the edge, you see how it just nicely turns that under for me? That just helps make it a little bit easier, cleaner as well. And I'm going to run this along this edge. That just pushes that out for me. There we go. And now we need to insert our stabilizer. So we have this stabilizer piece here. Now I'm laying it out first on top of it and I'm just measuring to make sure that it's not bigger because sometimes it ends up, if you're not accurate with your stitching, it ends up a little bit bigger. So you have to trim it down, but mine seems to be fine. So now going through that opening that we left, you want to insert this stabilizer into the base. And you can also, after you have this fused, add a piece of plastic car a cutting board or any harder material to really make this a nice firm base. It's good for like the weight of the bag. You have this extra strength in the bottom. So I'm just getting it pushed into the corners. It's a little bit hard for my hands, but just getting it all pushed into the corners, nice and even, so just like that. And you'll see, I didn't need to trim it because it's all into the corners here. It comes right in and it doesn't, it's not too big. I didn't push this corner out very good. There we go. And then let's see where the seams are, they're over top. So then what I'll do is I'll take this to my iron and I'm going to press this and while I'm pressing, it's also going to fuse this Decoville Heavy to the base pieces. And I'm just getting my seam allowance over because I kind of went with it over here. So I want it to be the seam allowance, the base pieces under the seam here. It's a little bit hard for my hands. There we go. Just makes it easier when I'm pressing this. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press that. And as I'm pressing, I'm going to make sure I press these openings under really nice. And I'm going to press this, which is going to fuse this in place for me. So I'm going to go to my iron, fuse it, and I'll come back. And when we come back, we'll top stitch around the entire edge. All edges, sorry, not entire edges, all four edges. All right, so I've given this a really good press, which has fused the Decoville inside the base here. So now we're going to top stitch all around all edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So, oh, and I ran out of bobbin. I can't tell, I think I might've ran out of bobbin. Oh no, I didn't. Oops. It's okay, I can pick that stitch out. It looked like I had ran out of bobbin. There we go. Sorry about this. <clears throat> My machine tricked me. All right, so again, stitching all the way around the four edges using your favorite top stitch seam allowance. And we're just going all the way around all four edges. You may need to adjust to make it so that when you go to the corners here that you keep your accurate seam allowance just as I did with my hand wheel here. You may need to take a shorter stitch length or just adjust. Just want to make sure I keep the same seam allowance all the way throughout. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. Trim all your threads. And as I always say, we don't want peekaboo threads later. And then 
there we go. It's all top stitched. We have our base now complete. We can set this to the side for now. We are going to now work on our handles and our handle connectors. So for your handle connectors, you need piece E. So I'm just gonna grab those for now. And this is if you're making the crossbody strap. So if you're not making the crossbody strap, you will skip this part altogether. But if you're wanting to make the crossbody strap, I always like to add it just in case whoever, say if I'm making this for myself or whoever else um, I'm making this for, if, or if somebody buys it, then they do have the option to not only wear it as a shoulder bag, but they can wear it crossbody as well. So they'll have those different options because they'll have the handles to carry it, which they can carry in the nook of their arm here or wear it on their shoulder or crossbody. So you'll have the connectors. You'll need to make a line down the center like I did, down the entire length. And then you'll fold the long edges in to meet that line. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape so I don't need to get up and go to my iron to press this. We're going to fold those long edges in to meet that center line. So place the double-sided tape along the long edges of the connector. So fold the connector long edges in to meet that line that you made, press it in place, and do that for both the connectors. So it looks like this, you'll have the raw edges meeting in the center. And then, we will top stitch the long edges of these connectors using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I see a thread here, I just wanna cut that thread. Now we're going to top stitch the connectors down each long edge. And then we'll trim our threads. Oops, my scissor holder keeps falling off the side of my machine. A magnet here and it just keeps falling off. It doesn't want to stay stuck. So there we go, I've top stitched down both long edges. Now we need to take our D-rings and we need to feed one of the connectors through the D-rings. And you're probably wondering why I didn't separate them earlier. That's just to prevent them from getting scratched up as I'm getting ready to use them. So fold them in half. So I sli slide the D-ring on to your connector and then you fold them in half. Whoa! And then we'll baste these short edges together. So the short edges where this clip is, we'll baste that together. And we'll do that for both connectors. And I'm just returning my stitch length back to the length I use for stitching a bag together because when you're basting, it doesn't really matter if you use a longer stitch length because you're just basting, which is just holding things together while you're getting ready to either attach it somewhere else or to keep it together so that when you're attaching it to another part of the bag, it doesn't shift on you. So that is the connectors. I'm just going to place these off to the side in that bag again that I made. And your handle construction is going to be the same in terms of making your mark down the center of your handle. So I've already made the mark down the center, down the entire length of my handle. 
and now I need to use some double-sided tape and I need to fold this to meet in the center. So grab your double-sided tape and you know what, I'm going to use my wider one. Put it down the entire length of the handle. Ow! Oh, that hurt. And again, fold your handle into the center mark. sticking to my nails. So fold it into the center mark just like that. Fold the other edge into the center mark. Now you don't want it to touch right in the center. You want to leave a little tiny tiny gap and that's just so that when we fold this in half again you don't end up with the bulk in that center seam there and it doesn't sort of make it hard to fold. Like I have no bulk in the center here. It's, they just line up perfectly. So those are now pressed in. Now what we need to do is we need to then add some double-sided tape along the center over the raw long edges and we're going to place our cording in that center and I'm using the wrong side double-sided tape. So I've got to grab some double-sided tape here. And I'm just placing it. Now you want to pay attention for where the cording is starting and stopping on your handles because you're only going that far with the double-sided tape. So just like that. Remove the paper backing. Grab one of your cordings and then place the cording between the marks from the end. So from the end up, there's a mark that you need to make for a measurement for where the cording is going to go because it doesn't go right to the end of the handle. It just goes from one short end to the other like that. And then what we're going to do is fold this in half again. And I'm going to add some double-sided tape just to help hold this in place along those edges just to make it easier to sew. Fold it in half so those folded edges meet. And I'm going to also use some clips. Clips and double sided tape. Oops. So I'm just folding it again so those raw edges meet, the folded edges meet. And keep in mind that you want to make sure that that cording is not in that area where you're folding right now. The cording is in this center seam here. It's right on top of those edges that we folded into the center. So now that we have this all clipped and folded, now what we need to do is we need to sew along one short edge, come across the short edge, go down the long edge and across that other short edge. And what that's doing is, is that's keeping this end where you fold those two folded edges it's closing those for you. So we are going to sew that using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I don't use my top stitch length for this, but I don't use the regular length, oops, that I use when I stitch a bag together. I use sort of in between those two. That's just a personal preference. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And it's okay if you're using, like I am here, a thread that doesn't match that's going to add a bit of pop and you back stitch here because these are going to actually end up being tucked into the bag where you won't see them later. Take your time when you're sewing your handle so you get a nice straight edge. Especially if you're like me and you're using a contrasting thread you really want to have a really nice straight top stitch. And then 
across this other short edge and then trim all our threads just like that and that is how our handle will look and you can see I've top stitched and you can see both sides all the way to the short edges as well. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to sew the second handle and then we will continue on when I come back with constructing the rest of the bag. So I'm just clipping that like that and then I'm going to put it to the side and create the other one. So I'll be right back. So both the handles are now done. These are really nice ruled handles. I like the way this is done and it just adds that extra strength with that cording in there as well, but you have this really pretty rolled handle. So again, I'm just going to place these both off to the side and we're going to move on. You know what? I don't even need to clip it. I'm going to leave them unclipped. It did help shape them a bit so when we go to attach them to the bag, they're shaped, but that's okay. So now we're going to move on with creating our strap that is going to be for your adjustable crossbody strap. Now, if you're not using a cr uh, crossbody strap and say maybe you would just rather have it a shoulder length, you can take a measuring tape and sort of measure where you would want the bag to hang. So put the measuring tape over your shoulder like this. Sorry, I'm trying to get on camera. Put your measuring tape over your shoulder like this. And then you can measure it, sort of see where you want your bag to hang when you wear it as a shoulder strap. That's just something that I do when I'm not really sure um, how long I want my shoulder strap to be, so I'll use the measuring tape. Sometimes what I do instead is construct the whole bag, and then when the bag is done, I'll take the measuring tape and clip it to the D-ring attachments, and I'll clip it there and I'll sort of measure and see what's comfortable for where I wanna wear my bag when I wear it as a shoulder bag. Now, keep in mind that different people like to wear their bags at different heights. Some people like the shoulder bag to be much more up higher, so it's more under their armpit, and other people like it to hang a little lower. And that's really what I like about a crossbody strap is it gives them the option to adjust it to the length that they are comfortable Comfortable with and then if they want they can still wear it crossbody if they prefer so I just like these adjustable straps for that reason because it kind of gives you a bit more options with them and it means that the person who is carrying the bag will just feel a little bit more comfortable because it makes it kind of customizable to them when they receive the bag so if you're making this crossbody strap you need your crossbody strap material you need your two swivel hooks and one slider. And again, I have them still all in the packaging and that's just to protect them so that they don't get banged up while they were all together there. And you can use webbing for this. You can use raw edge material for this. You could really use anything you want. I do have a little tutorial on my YouTube channel for making these crossbody straps if a pattern calls for webbing instead. Oftentimes I will use webbing just because it is really fast at adding it to the bag because all you're doing is literally just adding your web your hardware. So it's really quick. But for this tutorial, I decided to make my strap so that it would match my bag. And again, in that tutorial, I do go into a little bit of detail for making the strap. But for this one, I will show you just quickly. But I'll also link that tutorial if you need a little bit more information because I can't remember everything I said because I did film it so long ago. So you will have a piece of fabric that is cut to the length given in the pattern for making your adjustable crossbody strap. You'll have it like this. You'll then take that piece and you will fold it in half and press it. Now, if you're using a material that you can't press, what you'll do is the same thing we did with the crossbody connectors. You'll draw a line down the entire length of the strap in the center. Then you will press the long edges into the center, but don't have them touching. Same thing we did with the handle. You don't want that center, these pieces in the center to touch because you wanna have no bulk when you fold this in half like that. So again, that way there, there's no bulk here and you've enclosed all your raw edges. Now you have a couple of different options for finishing of these ends here. You can fold the end under like this and then refold everything into the center, just like that, so it encloses your raw edges. You can use some strap end hardware if you want, or the method that I have, which I'm going to do for this one, and I will link below how I do it. Um, so you can pause this again, open it in another tab, and watch that tutorial for how I create my straps and finish, so you get nice finished edges when you um, make a crossbody strap this way or any handles really where the ends will be seen. Sometimes I like to just add the strap ends because 
it's just really quick and easy and you don't have to worry about the raw edges because they're concealed within the strap ends. So I will link that tutorial below, but again, you just want to make sure that you fold the strap into the center so the long edges meet and then fold them again one more time. So fold it in half so those raw edges in the center are now concealed. And we'll push this out. And once we have this done where our raw edges on the short ends are pushed under, we will then top stitch the entire length of this handle or strap to enclose all the raw edges. Now you can also use some double-sided tape throughout your handle here to help, or strap, sorry I keep calling it handle, um, to help hold it in place and ensure that nothing shifts on you if you want instead of having clips. So there it is. I have my raw edges enclosed on the end. Now I'm going to top stitch down the entire length of this strap on both sides. And again, I'm sticking to that same length that I used, whoops, that I used for my handles. So not quite my top stitch length and not quite the length I use for stitching a bag together. And to prevent twisting, what you can do is stop when you get to the bottom and then back stitch at the bottom short edge and then start back up at the edge that you started at when you started stitching the strap together. So just like this, I'll show you. So come back up. Now, because I'm using quilting cotton, I'm not really concerned about the twisting because the way I get rid of the twisting is I'll take this to my iron after and I'll give it a really good press with my iron and I'll press it all flat again. And I find that that helps get rid of any twisting when I've used cotton. For some reason, even when I do it this way and I backstitch, oops, I backstitch and then I come back up to where I started, I still get twisting. So just pressing it again with my iron, sometimes I'll spritz it with my water because I do have a water bottle and I'll spritz it, but you can use steam from your iron and that just helps get rid of any of the twisting in the strap. Now, if you've made yours double-sided, you can still do that if you've used a quilting cotton on the other side and press it on the quilting cotton side to help press out the um, twisting. It just helps press it flat, that's all you're doing. So there's my strap and it is twisted. You can actually see it's still twisted. So, or maybe it's not, maybe it's just in my head. But I'm gonna go and press this with my iron really quickly. I'm gonna give it a little spritz, press it with the iron. And all I do is I just take my iron and I press it, press it, press it all the way along, leaving it flat and I let it cool before I move it. And then I do that again all the way along. And I do that on both sides and I'll just spritz it ever so lightly with some water just to sort of help really seal that in. Now, if you have a spray like flatter spray or anything else, you can also use that as well. So I'm gonna go press this because I can see that it is a little bit twisted and I will be right back and we will attach our hardware. All right, so as you can see, I've got my strap pressed nice and flat now. All the twisting is out of it and I used a bit of my water bottle and spritzed it a little bit. And then I spritzed it with some flatter because I like the way it makes it smell. That's just a personal preference. But the water, spritzing with water or using steam will help press it nice and flat, especially if you've used that quilting cotton, as I was mentioning. So you can see I don't have a twisted strap anymore. Unfortunately, you can't really do that when you're using a vinyl or, or any material that you can't really press. Um, you could do it if you put a pressing cloth over top of it first, but do a test on your material before you do that because you want to make sure you don't damage your material at all. So pressing cloth and then press with your iron and that'll help press it flat and also um, use a bit of steam if you feel you can and that will help it press flat and leave it cool so that it doesn't get twisted again when you move it around. So now we need to add our hardware and that's always the fun part. So you're going to take the short edge of your strap and you're going to slide it through your slider. Now your slider may have that bar in the center that moves like mine, you hear it, it jingles. And so I just let that bar drop to the bottom like that and then I slide my strap through it with the bar at the bottom still. Then what I do is I take the bar and I slide it so it goes against my strap like this, so see how it's against my strap. 
and then I bring my strap over that center bar. So now the center bar is between the strap and I'm trying to look on the camera here and see. So see how the strap, the bar is right here in the center and the strap goes over it. So when I pull it down, you can see the strap is over that center bar. We're going to pull this and I didn't trim my threads very well. So I'm going to just trim them. Now I am going to use rivets to attach these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place some clips for now and I will attach them with rivets after. So I'm going to wait until later when I may need to add more rivets to the bag. So I don't have to change out my dies on my, my tabletop press a few times. So if you don't have rivets, what you can do is you can sew here along this edge, you can sew a box and then sew an X inside the box here and that'll help reinforce it. So now with your strap so that your swivel clip is up and the side that's up is the side where I folded it over. So you can see the side that I folded it over. You want that on your table like that. Grab out your swivel hooks and make sure your strap is flat. With the swivel hook part against your table, slide your strap through the ring on the swivel hook. So again, see how my swivel hook is against the table? Bring the short edge of the strap up and slide it again through your slider. So up and over the center bar and back down. So same thing we did before so that the center bar is now in the center again. Pull it all the way through and then again, place this so your slider is now against the table. And then again with my swivel hook, against the table, I'm going to slide the end of my strap through the hardware on the swivel hook and I'm going to clip it in place. Now, like I said, I'm going to install my rivets. I'll go off camera after to do that, but that's how it looks. You can again sew that and then sew an X and that is how your strap will look. Now, before you do so, I do recommend doing what I'm doing here and adding clips and giving it a pull and making sure that it is installed correctly because the last thing you wanna do is accidentally sew things wrong or add your rivets wrong and then your strap is all incorrect and it doesn't work properly. So there we go, it does work. I'm going to place this off to the side until I need to use my rivet, my, my tabletop press to punch holes in it later. So I will show you how that looks, oops, when it's finished later, I'm dropping everything. So now we need to go on to, okay, and there is, before we move on, there is another one where you can do a two-sided strap, where you can take the strap and you can use some webbing on the other side of the strap so you can make it a double-sided strap. And it's the same idea as the double-sided strap tutorial I have on my website, I believe. So I will link that below, but Kristen does have all the steps in the pattern for how to make it double-sided. It's a really awesome idea because using the webbing will also make this an even stronger strap than you know it would if you were just using, say, you know, the two layers of quilting cotton. This is strong, but webbing will make it that much stronger. And it's just a nice little extra way to add some extra decorative because if you have a webbing that you know maybe has stripes or some kind of design you can have that on the other side of your strap so putting this off to the side for now and we're going to move on with the lining assembly so grab out your lining and again it will have your H pieces attached to it so it's a with H all attached so it looks like this all the way big this big 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 piece now there is a measurement that you need to make and I've already made it, you're not going to see it because I use chalk, but there's a measurement you need to make depending on the size of the bag you're making. So you wanna pay attention to that because there's two different measurements for the small and there's a different measurement for the large. So you really need to pay attention that you are using the measurement here for the accurate size you're making. So you're going to make a mark from the top down and you're going to make a line on both ends of the lining. So from the top down, and from the top down. And that's going to be where we're going to attach our zipper pocket and where we're going to attach our slip pocket. So you really, really want to pay attention to those markings because again, it's two different markings for the two different sizes. So pay attention to that so that you don't accidentally give the wrong marking and put the marking for the large on your small because that'll change the position of where these things are going. So the first marking I've already got, I've got them both made. And like I said, you can't see them because I used a chalk because I wanted to be able to dust it off after. 
So now I'm going to take my slip pocket for now. And, oh, that's the base. The slip pocket. Where is it? Oh my goodness. Where's my slip? I couldn't see it because it was blending in with the fabric. We're going to take our slip pocket and we're going to place the top edge of the slip pocket at that mark that I made. So you're going to place it at that mark and you're going to place it centered. So I'm going to create a center crease on this slip pocket just by doing that. And I'm going to create a center mark on my lining by folding it in half. And I should have probably done this before I stitched everything together, but I didn't. So just like that. I will need my pins. And now that I can see that center mark and I can see the center mark on this. So I'm lining it up with that mark I made. Now normally I wouldn't recommend using pins, but it's going to be on the lining side and I'm not super concerned about my cork. Oops, I can't get that through. There we go. Just make sure that it stays all nicely lined up. Place. And now that it's all pinned in place, we're going to sew down the sides, across the bottom, and up the other side. And we're going to use the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, for this I will use the seam allowance that I use when I stitch a bag together. And that's just because I really want this to be nice and secure. And I ran out of bobbin. Perfect time. Always perfect timing to run out of bobbin, right? So I'll have to back stitch there. That's okay, I have a bobbin already wound. So I don't need to go off camera to wind it. All right, continuing on with this. all the way around, down the sides, across the bottom. Now the other thing you can do is add some rivets at the top. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. This is just something Kristen has as an option, is to add some rivets at the tops in the corners of your um, pocket here, which I will. I'll go off camera and I'll punch the holes for the rivets and I'll add them here. And I'll also add the rivets to my strap, so I'll be able to show you that. So I'm going to go off camera. Actually, I won't do that yet. I'll do that when I attach the rivet for the zipper pocket, and you'll see in a second. So I'm going to leave that for now. So it is attached, you can see here. And as I was mentioning, see how the cork is inside? So say you have a water bottle and a little water spills out, it'll help protect the device that is in here if that's where you put your phone. So flipping this around, we again have that mark from the top down, and we need to grab our zipper pocket overlay and you're going to remove the paper from the double-sided tape.
So you remove the paper from the top, and I've already removed it from the bottom. I know I shouldn't have yet, but I just did just so that it goes a little bit easier for me. Find your center on your panels, and I'm just doing that by lining everything up here and creating a crease down the center. And again, there's my mark that I made across the top edge from the top down and the top edge of my overlay will go at that top edge of the line. So what I do is just fold this in half, place the half mark with the top of the line, or with the line, sorry, not the top of the line, with the line. So the top edge of the overlay is on the line and then press it down. Now you would remove your paper backing from the bottom edge of your overlay and then press that down. Now what we need to do here is we need to sew this in place and we're going to sew just along the outer edges. So you're going to sew along this outer edge, down the side outer edge, down around here, across where this is, you're going over the key minder part here and around and back up this edge and back over here. Now, if you don't want back stitching, you can do the same thing I showed you on the front panels when we connected H to A. You can leave long thread tails and tie them off in the back, which is what I will do here. And just make sure that none of your other fabrics or anything are underneath your presser foot because there is a lot right now. See, I just went across and if your machine struggles because there's bulk there you can use a humper jumper or whatever to get around that area and I'm just taking my time and I'm lifting my presser foot up as I go around I take it one stitch at a time needle down presser foot up pivot a little bit just like that just to get around those curves nicely just get really nice curves this way and then stopping right back in that same hole I started in leave long thread tails and then we're going to pull them through and tie them off in the back so I've got the loops coming up through the back and this may seem like a lot of work for this but it always in my opinion looks really nice when you don't have that back stitching on an overlay because the um, overlay like that I've used is beige and my thread is black so I won't see any back stitching at all and I just like it it's just a personal preference you can go ahead and back stitch if you want it's just a personal preference I just like it so now I'm tying these together I put them in a pair and I tie them together just be careful how tight you pull you want to pull tight but not too tight because you don't want to break your threads look at how pretty that looks already and again I went over that and I had no issue stitching over that now we need to get this cut out in the center here we need to cut out this material in the center so that we can in install our pocket so what we're going to do is use your seam ripper cut a hole and then I use my duckbill scissors for this part because I want to get in behind. So I'm going to cut down and then I'm going to carefully cut under where that overlay is. It's just like that. And then we'll cut away this opening. And this doesn't have to be like perfectly straight or anything because no one is going to see it once the bag is completed and your zipper pocket is installed I mean you'll see how mine looks right now so it won't look very pretty at all the goal is to just get it cut away from that opening so that you do not see it and you can put your zipper pocket in and as you can see like I said mine doesn't look very pretty but it's cut away so see mine doesn't look very pretty I don't do the best cutting I'm just wanting to make sure I get this opening done so that we can then put our zipper pocket in there. So now what we need to do is take the zipper pocket 
here. So here's our zipper pocket. You're going to open it up. And again, I'm just gonna finger, pre finger press this. And I'm going to remove the paper backing from the double-sided tape. And again, I keep hitting my elbow on the machine. That really hurts. I'm removing the paper backing and I'm just gonna have my zipper pull pointing that way so that it doesn't get in the way. So there's the zipper pocket. It's flat. I'm looking at the wrong side of the pocket, but the right side of the zipper tape. I'm then going to take my overlay and I'm going to place it over top and center the zipper pocket and the zipper within the opening of the zipper overlay. And it keeps sticking to my nails. So centering it, press it down, get it centered. Just like that. So there we go. See how it's centered in the pocket? That's what you want. Now, something I like to do just for extra security is I can feel where this pocket is. And remember the T? The T goes at the top. It's sticking off the edge of the fabric. But for some extra security to make sure that I don't accidentally sew the bottom. Oops. I just bent that pin. Sew the bottom of the pocket or the top of the pocket into the overlay when I'm stitching around it right now is I'm gonna add some clips and that'll help hold everything in place so that it doesn't come under my needle when I'm sewing. So now what we need to do is the opposite of what we did earlier. Instead of sewing along the outer edge, we're gonna sew along this inner edge around the zipper tape all the way around. And you can do the same thing don't backstitch at start and stop. Leave long thread tails and then we'll pull them through and tie them to the back when we're done. Now remember about that zipper pull, we do still need to move that out of the way. So with your needle down, lift up your presser foot, move the zipper pull out of the way so you can stitch around it. And then pivot when you get to your corners. Now, if you're worried about, in the corners, about getting angled stitches, what you can do is change your stitch length to zero, take one stitch in the corner, return your stitch length back to the length you were using, pivot your material, so just like that, and then continue stitching along until you get to the next corner. And again, I'm approaching that zipper pull, so zipper or needle down, slide the zipper out of the way, And there I am in that corner, one stitch, just making sure that that's engaged in the bobbin. It happens to us all. Just making sure the threads are out of the way, I don't want to stitch over them. So I'm coming back to where I started and again, start or stop back in the hole you started in. Pull the threads to the back to tie them off. I'm so glad I used black thread. I was gonna go with a white thread and I'm so glad I chose this one because I can actually see it. So I'm just trimming my threads so they're all the same length. And then same thing, put them in pairs and tie them off if I can get them in pairs. Sometimes my hands don't wanna cooperate. So in a pair, and tie them off. All right, then snip that thread. Now we can remove these security needles and pins, sorry, and clips. I like to call them security because that's what they are, security. Now what we need to do is we need to now take that pocket and we need to press it down. So we need to sew the pockets closed. So on the wrong side, see how I brought that top pocket down to meet the bottom pot piece of the pocket? Oops. We're going to add some clips and we're going to sew the three sides closed. So you're going to sew all around your pocket right now using the seam allowance given in the pattern and use the length you use for stitching a bag together. And don't forget to backstitch at start and stop.
Now we have a really beautiful pocket stitched into our bag with a key minder to clip our keys to. Now, remember I was saying I was going to wait to add my rivets here to this pocket until I did it here? We need to add a rivet here, right here on this end of the swivel hook, right above it. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to carefully cut a hole here without going through the stitching. So make the hole, you can do it even right here in between the stitching here, or you can do it just right under your stitching here if you want, wherever you want. I'm going to do mine right up in here. And then be careful that you move your, uh, just remember that you're going to be going through your pocket. So it actually is, sorry, is better. Lift your pocket, excuse me, I made an error. Lift your pocket up, sorry, because you will go through your pocket if you do it where I was saying. Or what you could do is place your tabletop press and open up your pocket and do it through your pocket instead. So you'll go through the inside of your pocket here and here, and then you can stitch, yeah, stick it through there. Or right down here, but be careful to move your pocket out of the way and be careful not to cut through that stitching here that you did on your overlay. And I'm going to add the two rivets there and the rivets to my strap. So again, you can open up your pocket and stick your tabletop press through or your punch through here and add the rivet so that it's between the stitching here, right here, or go right under the stitching at the bottom here, just right under. So wherever you choose and add your rivets. If you don't have rivets, what you could do is you could just sew a little um, X underneath here, like just add a little extra line of stitching and make a little X here between the top of your hardware and this line here. You can just sew an extra maybe line and then if you can get an X in there. And on here too, you could even maybe just sew a little box with an X in the corners here too, just to give it some extra reinforcement. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and we will continue on with creating our bag. So I've gotten all those rivets installed now and as I mentioned I would put them on my strap so there it is on the strap so that it is nice and completed and if you have Chicago screws you can use Chicago screws as well and for the rivet here I placed it just under so it looks like it went through my stitching but I didn't my hole is punched literally just right under that stitching but again you can go in through the pocket and punch the stitching so that your other end of your rivet would be in your pocket and then I have the rivets on my um, slip pocket as well so the next thing we need to do is grab our zipper excuse me grab our zipper and then have it so that it is wrong sides up and remove the double-sided tape from the backing sorry from one long edge of the zipper so remove the double-sided tape backing from one long edge of the zipper and we're going to place this along one long top straight edge of our lining panel so place it just like this along that long straight edge now <clears throat> excuse me before I do that she does have a tip I believe it's on page 24 um, where you cut into a just up to where the stitching is that you made for connecting H and what that does is so I'll show you here so I'm going to move H out of the way and I'm going to cut into a up to that stitching Hang on, I did it on another one here. I had already done it. And I just wanted to show you how it looked. Where'd it go? Oh my goodness, I can't find it. I had already done it earlier, just so that I could show you. Oh wait, I did it here. It is done here. So I cut into A, just right up to the stitching here. So if you look here where A is, and where it's connected to H, you cut so that it goes straight across with this line just up to your stitching here that you made an H. So you're not cutting H at all, you're just cutting A. 
and you're just cutting into that corner because that'll help everything lay a little bit flatter just like that so see how that helped make that nice and flat now so if you look at this side it's kind of still wanting to to curve so see how it how this looks here how it's still wanting to curve down oh and I see a thread I never cut oops see how it's but see, did you see how it was still wanting to curve with where the stitching is but this side is now nice and flat so that helps with the stitching or when we construct the bag so I'm doing it now so that when we attach that zipper it's already done I'm doing it now on the panel the lining panel and I'm going to do it at both ends just snipping right up to where that stitching is so don't cut your stitching you're just cutting the main panel a just up to the stitching that's it don't go any further than up to the stitching and I'm just keeping it in line with these flat pieces here <coughs> excuse me and you'll see that because we've done that that helps these pieces lay flatter so that you don't have that buckling going on so see how nice and flat that helps that lay that just helps get a nicer flatter edge and it'll help later too so you see how we cut it It'll help later too when we have this cut and we go to construct the bag because you've opened those up to make it easier. So back to what I was saying, now that I've got that cut and it's nice and flat, you're going to take the zipper, you've already removed the tape off the backing. We're going to line up the zipper with one of the top edges of the lining. just line it up and the zipper is going to go right sides up and you want to center the zipper along the top straight edge so make sure it's also centered did not mark my center marks so I need to do that now I just want to really make sure everything's nicely centered it's gonna be a little bit hard because I have this pocket here but that's okay I'm all about making sure everything is nice and even zipper fold it find those center marks there we go and I'm using a heat transfer pen so I'm not super concerned about the marks if they're out of my seam allowance normally I would be but I'm not going to be super concerned about it so I could see the center mark is there I'm lining up my center marks And then place it down. So the double sided tape is helping hold that in place. You can use clips as well if you want. And now we're going to base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So from one end all the way to the other. And if you need to switch to a different presser foot so that you can get an accurate seam allowance, go ahead and do that. You can slide your zipper pulls out of the way as well when you get near them. Again, make sure your needle is down in your material. And I can see here that my zipper tape went off a little bit from the top edge. I just wanna make sure it stays straight.
go. Perfect. So that's how it looks right now. It's stitched in place. Now, same thing on this side. Find your center mark. Line up the center of the zipper tape. <coughs> I mean, not the center of the zipper tape, top edge. Center of the top edge of your lining. Sorry, I know I said zipper tape. So that you can line up your zipper tape, the center of the zipper tape. So you have this one edge with the zipper attached. I'm just gonna press this down with my finger. Because now we're creating a tube and I won't be able to press that down as nicely after. I can, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to remove this paper backing from this side now and bring this end that of the zipper tape that doesn't have anything attached to it up to the top edge here that has nothing attached to it as well and line them up. So line up those top edges all the way across, those top raw edges. I'm just going to slide my zipper pulls out of the way so I can keep a nice straight edge. There we go. And again, baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm going to slide my zippers out of the way. just going to go in and press this open. And now I'm going to open the zipper and we're going to top stitch the zipper flat and you're going to use the seam allowance given to the pattern. Now this is in the round in a, in a tube so it's going to be a little bit more difficult but not totally impossible. So what I do here is I just have it placed like this and I do have the zipper open just until I get enough past the zipper where I can slide it on by and I'm just maneuvering my fabric keeping the only thing under there is the zipper tape where I'm top stitching and I'm moving all the bulk as you can see here on my machine, I'm just moving the bulk. I'm kind of going around and it's going this way. So there's bulk in the bed of my machine under the throat and then over here in front of me here. And I'm just going to top stitch along. Now I'm going to zip up my zipper a little bit. And that just helps me get in there and then onto the other side now so move this out and I'll go back and trim up my threads after I'm done I don't want to do that right now so again top stitch all the way along there's my zipper slide that out of the way Again, I'm just keeping the bulk out of the way, ensuring that I'm not stitching through anything else but that seam allowance there that I just attached the zipper to. <clears throat> you don't have to zip up your zipper if you don't want to. I think I might be okay here, but I'm just gonna hold the zipper pull so that it doesn't get under the zipper or the presser foot, sorry. And see, I've top stitched it, so you can see here the top stitching along the edge, both edges. Trim your threads. So you can see that's how the end looks, and then you can see there that it's top stitched on both sides. Now I just want to see what's next. 
So now we need to add some more double-sided tape to the edges of our zipper just over the stitches, but we're not going to remove the paper backing just yet. So place it over those stitches we just made. So over that top stitching stitches. Don't remove the paper backing at all. Keep the paper backing on. <coughs> put that too long. And I'm just really making sure that that's pressed down. So there we go. I have the double-sided tape now along the two long edges of the zipper, but I'm not removing it at all. I'm just leaving it there. Now we need to take the short ends where the zipper is. So right here, the short ends of the zipper panel here and we need to line it up with the bottom panel. So line it up and you're going to center it. So find the center mark and line it up and center it. And what you can do is you can even fold it. I was just sort of eyeballing it, but you can fold it in half. And then because we have a seam here, you can line up the center with the seam. Oops. And you know what? My tab, my um, zipper tabs are longer than my material, than my ends. So I just trim that down so it's all even. Line up that center mark. Pin it in place. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll repeat that on the other side. So again, my tab, my zipper tabs ended up being longer than the ends of the panels. So I trimmed it so it's the same length. Again, line up the center with the center of the seam. If you've done what I did, which was stitched two directional fabrics together. Otherwise, you'll need to find the bottom middle of the bottom here. So those are pinned in place. Now, there is a mark that we need to make across the bottom here. So I'll have to go off camera to do that, but we'll have to make a mark across the bottom. Then from each short edge, you'll need to make a mark up on both sides of the bottom panel here. So this is the bottom. So the bottom is where I have the stitching, where I place the two pieces together. Top is zipper, bottom is the one without the zipper. So up from the bottom, you'll make a mark and then you'll cut it at an angle following the instructions of the panel of the, in the pattern. Now, yes, the top is smaller than the bottom, but when we angle it, that'll help make them so that this part of the gusset is the same size. So I'm going to go off camera to do that because I can't show you measurements on camera. But again, make your mark across here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make your mark here where you're supposed to and your mark here and then trim it on an angle just like it's given in the pattern. And when I come back, you'll be able to see how it looks. So I'll go off camera, I'll do that, and then I'll come right back. I forgot to mention, before we trim away the sides, that mark that you make here across the bottom, we need to stitch on top of that. So I'm going to make that mark, stitch across, then I'll make the marks here and trim away, and I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. I forgot to mention that, but you do need to baste across or sew across where you make that mark. Just on top of the top panel, you're not going all the way to the ends of the bottom panel. Just from where the top panel starts and stops is where you're sewing. So I will do that and then I'll come back and we'll continue on. Okay, so I've trimmed those panels or the all the ends. So this is how it's going to look when you have it trimmed. So again, you're making a mark. So you can see my marks are still there. I'm just trying to find it on the camera. Hang on. So you can see my mark is still here, right there where my finger is here. You can see the mark is there. So I had made the mark measuring up from the bottom and I made the mark. Then what I did was I took where the mark was and I angled it and made a mark down to where the zipper panel or top sorry panel meets and then I trimmed it away at an angle so it'll look like that on the back and I did that on both sides so again there's a measurement from the bottom up that you'll make from the bottom short edge up this long edge make a mark and then connect the mark from here to where the top panel is and then you will have it not only sewn together but trimmed so that you have this nice shape of the bag and it kind of creates that gusset so now what we need to do is 
we need to attach the H panels to the gusset. So starting at the bottom corners, you're going to clip the edges together. And again, this is where it was important to cut into the A piece. So remember that tip on page 24. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to also clip not only the bottom, but up at the center here. So I have all my center marks made. So I have my center of my H and I'm going to clip it there. And we're going to ease the fabric in around the H panel. So you're just going to ease it in. So starting in the bottom corners, clip the edges together. And if you need to, you can slip into the, snip into the allowance, the seam allowance of the gusset to help ease the fabric into place. <coughs> So starting at the bottom corners, clip it in place. And I'm just clipping it in place here lining up the raw edges. I'm just going to make sure this one's the same thing. Lining up my raw edges. And then we're just going to keep easing it all the way around. And actually the center mark doesn't go where that center mark is, so ignore what I said about lining up center marks. I do have a center mark marked on my H panel, but we don't need to. So ignore that. Now my seam allowance here, where the zipper panel is, or zipper panel, I keep calling it zipper panel, but where the zipper is, this I know is the bottom where the zipper isn't. So I'm pushing that seam allowance towards the bottom. It, it'll just make more sense when the bag is constructed to have your seams going towards the bottom. And you're just sort of easing it in. Now you may need to, again, snip into the seams but you want to ease the fabric in all the way around. So get it so that it's eased in and you don't have any puckering. And that's where snipping into the curves of the seam allowance may be helpful for you. So it may take just a little bit of maneuvering, but you'll get it just like that. There we go. So see how it looks there and how it looks there. Now you can make those snips in the curve if you want. I think I might just go for it. And then sew it. So you're going to start sewing together, but you're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now again, remember that hot tip I had did before I had started doing this where I clipped? You'll want to check out that hot tip on page um, 24 as she's got listed in the pattern because there's a tip for how to snip into that again like I had showed you earlier so that this helps with this lining this all up. So starting in the center of the clipped edge we're going to start in the center using the seam allowance and sew to the corner. Now the reason we're not starting on the edge here in the corner and coming all the way around and going to the other corner is it's easier to sew from the center and go into a corner than from a corner all the way across. It's easier to go into the corners. So starting in the center, we're going to, or close to the center, I'm just going to start where that zipper is, the seam for the zipper, and you're going to sew all the way around, making sure you keep your fabric as flat as you can. And again, make snips into the fabrics if you feel that that's going to help you keep your fabrics nice and flat. And just keep sewing all the way around until you reach that end down here. And see how it connects. See how I sewed it so it connects to the H here? So there's no hole here. I went, I could feel where my H was when I was sewing and I just sewed right over that. So then flip it over and we're going to again do the same thing starting in the center or close to the center. I just start where that seam allowance is, where that zipper panel is and I just sew all the way around making sure everything is flat underneath 
and making sure as well as I'm sewing around that there's nothing under the needle that should not be there. So it's a lot of maneuvering things around. But again, I'm coming over to where that H panel is and I just go right up to that stitching that we made when we attached the H to A. And that means when we look inside, how can I show you this? When we, when we look inside the bag, Look at how nice and beautiful that looks. You have no holes, no puckers, no nothing. You just have this really beautiful half circle right now. And that noise is my chair rubbing on the table. So now we're going to repeat that. So I'm just going to show you one more time. Starting in this bottom corner and again, clip into the seam as shown in the um, hot tip there that Kristen gives. Clip into the seam. I hadn't done it there, so I just did it. And ease your fabrics in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So lining up all the seams. And that tip is a really helpful tip because it will really make the difference in sewing that curve and sewing whoops, that um, area. It makes it easier to clip it together and it also makes it easier so you don't get those puckers. And I'm just, again, smoothing out the fabric. I'm easing the fabric in that curve. And remember, as I was saying, there really isn't, you can't line up the center of these half circles with the center of the gusset because it's not the center where the zipper is. That was my mistake. And I don't want this melting because it's on my heater. So I'm just gonna pick it up. So again, starting in the center or close to the center. So I just start where that seam allowance is for the zipper. Backstitch and work your way into the corner making sure all that material is nice and flat and nothing is underneath that shouldn't be and when I get back down here I can tell where I'm at I can feel it I can feel where that H and A meet and I backstitch and you see how I went right there and I just backstitch an awful lot I know but it's just extra security make sure it's in place so starting again back where I started the previous time in the center or on that seam and go around and make sure you keep everything flat and just keep stitching around and go all the way to that stitch line that we made again when we attached A to H and now we have two sides of the bags attached and bag attached and that's what it looks like right now so it goes wider as it comes towards the bottom because of the way we trimmed it so see that's how it looks so far so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera I'm also going to I mean it's not a huge concern for me when I have threads inside here but I'll th cut the threads too but now what I'm going to do is go off camera and I'm going to repeat this for the other remaining sides and then we'll come back and we will work on our exterior. So I'm going to go finish these and then come back and we'll work on our exterior. All right, so my lining is now complete. I have sewn all the side, so the H pieces to A. And again, what I did was after I clipped it and I eased it all the way around, you can make snips again into that seam allowance to help you open up the seams. I just sewed it, it was fine and I didn't clip any threads yet. And then I start in the center or close to the center. Now there's the center is kind of hard. You can see it here. I did mark the center on H, but what I did instead was I started just where this seam allowance is, where the zipper panel and the bottom meet. And then I backstitched and went from the center to the corner and I stopped stitching where my H panel meets my A. Backstitched, then I came back and I stitched again from the center, backstitched and went back down into that corner. It's easier to go from the middle into a corner than to go from a corner up. It's just a lot easier. And that way there, you end up with your corner, your center, your, sorry, your sides, all stitched and nice and no puckers, no nothing, because you've eased it in, you just have this beautiful lining of your bag. And that's how it's looking so far. And this is really exciting, because you know you're getting close to being done when we've got the lining constructed. 
you know you're almost done or if this was the exterior. So now what we're going to do is most of the hard parts, as Kristen says, are done. But now what we need to do is we need to finish our exterior. So grab your exterior back. And what you need to do is add some double-sided tape to the wrong side of the top edge of the main exterior panel, so of AH. And you need to also mark a line from the top edge down from the top edge, from short end to short end, and do that on both sides. And then once you have that done, you'll remove the paper from the double-sided tape and fold that edge in to meet. Now again, we're going to go and make those snips as Kristen had given on 24. And again, I'm going to walk you through how to do that. And what she has you do is where A and H are, she has you snip into A so that it goes to where H is. So she has you snip into it so that it is easier when we go to construct the bag. So I'm just snipping into it just like that without cutting my stitches. Again, snipping into where the stitching is, just going up to the stitches, not cutting the stitches at all. And I'm doing that now because it's going to make things a lot easier. So again, same thing we did with the lining, exact same thing, nothing's different. We're just making those snips. It's easier when you can flip it this way and see it. And what you're doing is you're just helping the fabric sort of spread a little bit easier too, so you don't get all the puckers. Did I already snip that one? No. Oh yeah, I did. I snipped that side, and I snipped this side, yeah. and this one, and this one. Okay, so it's all snipped, but I feel like I didn't snip this one. And just remember, you're not wanting to go past the stitching or cut the stitching. You just want to go up to the stitching. Just and again this makes it easier too as you saw when I was doing my lining it makes it really easy to attach that lining as well so this just helps make it so that it opens everything up and it makes so that you can attach the side panels to the gusset now we need to now that we have that done I know I skipped ahead but I wanted to get that done so that it's out of the way and we can focus on everything else and just get moving right along all right so now that we have that all cut into the corners it just helps it lay flat for this part so we're going to go and add that double-sided tape as she has in the pattern now I may need some more double-sided tape hopefully I have more of that one with I do yay all right so using our double-sided tape we're going to place it so remember that was there was that mark that we had to make that I mentioned before we cut into the H panels and A panels there's the mark from the top down that you need to make so go ahead and do that and then we'll apply our double-sided tape So I'm placing this at the top, all the way across the top edge. On both sides. Because this bag is a drop-in lining bag, so we need to have this edge pressed. And then you're going to press this down to that mark you made. 
So press this down. And the nice thing about it is it goes right over your interfacing. So you know you have the mark made correctly if this goes right over that interfacing. Like the top edge of my interfacing is right at that fold. Just like that, all the way across. And like I said, the interfacing is right at the top edge of that fold. So I'm just folding it over to meet that line. There we go. So I folded it over to meet that line, just like that, on both edges. Now, if you're using the handles, what we're going to do is we now need to take our facings and you need to clip them to the top edges so that the outer sides of the facings are in line with this seam here where H and A meet. And you're going to line it up with the top edge, the top folded edge. So they're going to be like this. So if you look, it's going to line up with this top where H and A meet. So just at the top and along this top edge here, and I'll clip it and I'll show you what I mean. It's hard for me to do this while looking at it that way. Just like that. So see where H and A meets? That's lined up, the side edge is lined up with where H and A meet, and it's lined up with the top edge here. So you're going to clip them all. Uh oh, where'd they all go? Oh no, oh there they are. You're going to clip all the other three just like that. Line up the top edge and then line up the side edge with where H meets A. So top edge lined up and H and A where they meet are lined up with the side edge. Clipping it in place. Top edge is lined up and the side edge is lined up with where H and A meet. Just like that. So I have them like that. Now, just to note that there's a collaboration alert and Kristen wanted me to mention it and it's Did You See Elaine's Honey's version of the interchangeable berated handles? It's amazing. This was her idea so I Kristen wants to tell you that if you want to learn how to make them, please go to her website to support her and pick up her add-on to the pattern. And the link is given in the pattern. And you will need to add connector pieces, such as in step nine, um, for this pattern in order to do this with these interchangeable berated handles. Now, if you're just doing them with the rolled handles as Kristen has in the instructions, we'll continue on. But if you're doing it that way, you will want to follow along with her instructions if you want to add those so that they're interchangeable. Now that you have this attached, all your facings, you need to make the markings on the facing. So from the top down, you'll measure and make a mark and you'll draw the rectangle here as Kristen instructs in the pattern. Now I've already gone ahead and done that because I don't show my rulers on camera. So now with a shorter stitch length, I'm going to stitch all the way around this rectangle that I made, making sure to back stitch at start and stop. going to do that for all four facings. Stitch all the way around. It's stuck on my microphone cord. And again, if you're worried about angled stitches in the corners, you can take that one stitch length that I had mentioned earlier 
in the corner before you pivot. Oops. Oops. So there's two so far stitched around. And let's stitch the final two. Now, if you're not ha adding handles, instead you're just doing the crossbody strap connector, you can just skip this step altogether. Fast forward the tutorial to the next parts. one being stitched. <clears throat> oh, it's pulling on my cord here of my microphone again. All right. There we go. We have that all stitched so now all the facings are stitched now we need to cut a slit just like we do with zipper pockets when you cut a slit if you've done zipper pockets that way so cut a little opening just a tiny one just like that so you can see it's just ever so small that I've cut the opening and then we're going to cut V's into the corner but don't cut your stitching And we say it almost looks like a Y, what you're cutting in each end. But this may end up looking like an X because it's such a small little area. So you can see here how I cut it. Now we're going to pull the facing to the back. And you can press it. However, I'm going to wait and cut the rest of them and then bring it over to my iron and press them all after. So that's how it looks right now with it pulled through. So I'm going to go off camera and cut the rest of the facings and then I will press them on the wrong side and on the right side just to get it nice and flat. And then I'll come back and we will add our handles. So I won't be long, although it's paused so you don't know how long I'm gone for. But I will cut the openings again. So you cut a little slit and then you cut the V's into the corner. So I'm going to draw it on this so you can see now. Please don't judge. I might not have the straightest lines. So it'll look just like that. And you'll cut those. And then you'll pull your facings to the back just like this and then press it and we will come back and add our handles. So another tip for you so that if you're a little bit worried about say ripping through or pushing your, your seam ripper through too far and accidentally cutting through everything, a little tip. What you can do is take your pin and place your pin, you know, where about you think you want that line to stop when you're ripping with your seam ripper and my seam ripper is trying to make a run for it. If you can see it just rolled away. So place your pin just about there. Then you'll place your seam ripper inside and you'll cut your material and see how my needle is stopping my seam ripper from going any further? That's a little tip that I do for when I'm doing things like um, hardware, so purse feet. If I have to cut slits, and especially when I'm cutting slits in material like faux leathers or vinyls or anything like that, You've probably seen them this tip maybe in one of my other tutorials, but where the prongs are So the tips of the prongs I put the needle in where the tip starts where the pr one prong is and the other and then I use the, the same method and that just stops me from seam ripping any further because there's nothing worse than seam ripping and you rip a little too far because we have to push sometimes a little bit so that just helps with that. So I just wanted to share that tip with you just in case you had never seen that before. Or maybe this is your first time watching one of my tutorials. I really wanted to share that tip. I just find it's really helpful and it makes it easier and less stressful when you're seam ripping. You don't have to feel so afraid to kind of just push if you need to. So again, I'm going to finish this and then I'll come back and we will add our handles. All right, so now that we have these facings pressed and I like to use water to get them pressed nice and flat, but you can see they're all pressed here. We now need to insert our handles into this facing. Now you want to have it so that the 
edge here where you stitched is facing out and the rolled edges are in. So you're going to slide the handle in. Then we'll flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side. And now what we want to do is bring this facing down over top of the handle and you're going to add a clip here. And you can see I've lined up my handle with the edge here of the facing. So clip it in place and then flip it so your AH piece is out of the way because now we need to stitch this handle to the facings. Now you want to stitch as close as you can to the exterior pieces without stitching over the exterior pieces. So I'm going to switch to a zipper foot so that I can get nice and close without any issues. Oh, something just dropped. I don't know what that was. I need to pick it up. Oh, it's off one of my presser foots, or feet, not foots, feet. All right, so again, with A and H out of the way, I'm going to stitch as close as I can to the exterior here without stitching through the exterior itself, but as close as I can get. Now, you are stitching through a lot of layers here. If your machine struggles with sewing through a lot of layers, you may want to switch to a bigger needle, try a walking foot as well, and increase your stitch length a little bit. And just back stitch a few times, or as I'm doing, a lot of times. So just like that, and then you'll see that the handle is now connected to the facings, and I didn't sew through my exterior at all. It is just through the facings and that is it. So now we need to take this handle and we need it to bring it down into the other side. Again, flip it over and you're going to clip this together and you're going to sew this as close to the exterior as you can get without sewing over the exterior. just like that. Now you can actually cut, and I just wanted to mention this, I forgot to mention at the beginning, you could cut your handles so that they're longer if you want to have this more of a shoulder handle if you want. I cut my handles the way it was in the bag, in the pattern, the bag pattern, so that that's how they look. You have these, they're more handles, so they're like a grab, not a grab handle, but you know you can wear it over the crook of your arm here or whatever. So that's how that looks. So now what we need to do is we need to take these and you want to add some Chicago screws or rivets and you can add them centered just under here where the handle is. But before I do that, I'm going to add my second handle following the same steps I just showed you in the tutorial here. So I'm going to go off camera to add the second handle. And again, make sure the seam here is facing outside the bag so that when we have the bag all constructed and finished, the seams are touching each other in the middle where the zipper is. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to sew that the second handle to the bag and then I will attach my rivets and then we will come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag. All right, so I've installed those rivets. Now, if you don't have rivets, another option is to just sew along the bottom underneath the handle on top of the A panel here, just starting from where the handle is and stopping where the handle is, and that way there you just have that extra reinforcement here because that's what these rivets are doing. They're adding some extra reinforcement here to the handle. So now my rivets are all installed. So if you are adding the crossbody strap connector, your or connectors, you're going to want to grab those out have them handy because we're going to add those now so first what we need to do is align these short edges here so see how these edges here you remember before we had the zipper for the lining attached to it we need to align these short edges and what you're going to do is you're going to bring them so that the folded edges meet in the center and it's going to feel a little bit wonky because there's nothing attaching them. So you're just going to clip them together, just like this, 
and you want to baste across this short edge here. So again, it's going to feel a little bit wonky, but we're going to hold them together. So you're going to align these short edges at the top and the edges that are folded are meeting in the center. You want to make sure those center edges are folded. You don't want the raw edges together. You want the folded edges together. So we're going to sew this together. Oh, first. Yeah, so we're basting it first. So we're basting across. So I'm going to switch. I thought I skipped a step again. I keep doing that. I read ahead and then I miss a step. So I'm going to switch to my presser foot. So switching back to the regular presser foot, aligning those edges. So aligning those short edges. So it's going to feel a little bit tricky, but we can do this together. So needle down, back stitch, and then just feed it through and back stitch. So just like that. So see how it holds that together and I just back stitched on the short edge. And it's kind of feels a little tricky. Like I said, it feels a little wonky, but just take your time. So you can start with the needle down back stitch, make sure they're together. And then you can even hand stitch this if you wanted to, to make them stay together if you're just not comfortable sewing this part with your machine. But see how I stitched them together and make sure nothing's twisted too. So you can already almost see how the bag looks. Oh my gosh, I love it, they look so pretty. So now that we have these short edges stitched together, what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch from this end here that we've stitched together going up and she gives you an, an, an approximation of how far up you should go. But when you stop, don't cut your threads, leave long thread tails and we're going to tie this off in the back. And the reason for this is it will help you in the final assembly step so that you're not trying to stitch as close to the hardware here. So. You can back stitch when you start on the edge here. So starting at the edge where we've where we've basted those two edges together, we can back stitch. So stitch up a bit. Pull your needle up, long thread tails. Just like that and tie them off in the back. And again, this will help you later in the assembly so that you're not stitching close to that hardware. So do that on both sides. So on the left and the right side, and then on that end and the other end. So this end and the opposite end. So we have this end here. I pointed to the wrong side. So this hand end here. And again, tie off my threads in a knot. Anything that makes stitching easier is always welcomed when especially when it's a final assembly so again long thread tail so now I'm starting on this end instead of going out because it's going to feel wonky to go that way so I'm starting here I'm not going to back stitch I'm just going to go all the way to the end and I'll back stitch when I get to the end so the only time I back stitch is when I'm at this raw end here where we've basted those ends together but when we're in the center or towards the center, that's where we want to leave long thread tails so we don't have any back stitching there. So pull the thread tails through to the back, tie them off, and then again, the same thing I mentioned previously, you can add a dab of glue or fray stop, fray check, but you do want to allow that to dry before you move on because it can gum up your needle and make a mess on your machine too. There we go. So I'm not going to do that other side on camera. I'm going to move on and show you how to attach your hardware and then I will go off camera and I will do everything else. So now that we have the stitching here done, so you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but my stitching starts and stops right here. So it stops right here. I've started on the end and I've stitched all the way to where my thumb is here. And then I pulled them through and tied them off to the back and I did that on both sides here. Now what we need to do is take the strap connector and there's an amount that it needs to hang off the edge. So I'm going to just mark that now. And I'm just doing it off camera. 
So place these two together. So place your ends that you just stitched. And again, it's going to be a bit wonky because you're kind of competing with this bag that isn't all stitched together right now, but we can do it. I know we can. So hold it together just like that. And there's a measurement that you need to make for how far off the connector will be of your panel. So with that marked, you're going to center it on, I want to bend this out of the way so you can see better on my table. And it's just hard because you've got to hold this all together. Normally I would try to show you closer, but I will once I get it stitched. So holding that together, the mark on my connector is right there. I'm going to place this centered and have that mark so it hangs off the edge, that's that amount. Clip it in place, just like that. And then we're going to baste this together. We're going to baste this in place. So make sure your panel stays together. baste it together just like that so see how the ends hang off the edge of the connector hangs off the end of my panel and it's basted and remember the hardware goes towards the center of the bag so I'm going to go off camera I'm going to repeat that process of so the top stitching and adding my connector to the other side and then I'll come back and we will continue on with making our bag all right, so now that I have that last connector attached and the top stitching done up that little bit of the way, I'm going to turn this inside out because we need to do what we did with the lining on the exterior here and attach the ends. So we're going to attach this end here, the top, with the bottom. So you need to line up the centers and that's pretty easy because we can see the centers here. It's just going to be a little bit tricky again because, again, this is not attached together, so it's going to want to open up on you. So just put some clips to hold it in place. And then there's the mark again, and it's the same thing we did with the lining, so I'm not going to go into too much detail because we've already done that with the lining. But you're going to make a mark across here and stitch across it and then a mark from the bottom up, make that mark and then you're going to draw a line down and then trim it. Once you have that sewn, you'll be able to trim that off. So again, clip these together. So hold this together so the centers are together. Line up, oops, line up the center marks. Make sure your D-ring is pushed down and out of the way. Sew across using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'll show you. And I'm just sewing across on the top here of the top panel. Oops, make sure your stitch length is at the length you use for structural seams. So we're sewing across, making sure this is nice and straight and everything is all lined up. Now remember, if you've cut all your pieces correctly, you should not be sewing through any of your interfacing. If you do a little bit, it's not too bad. Don't worry about it. But there you go. We've sewn across that. So I'm going to sew across the other edge. Now she does have you mark the seam allowance, but I'm just sewing just to show you what we're going to do next. I don't want to go into too much detail because like I said, we did this already for the lining. And I can't show you on camera my measurements, but now what I'm going to do is from the bottom up, I'm going to make a mark. And then once I have that mark made, I'll cut on an angle so that we have that shaped again like we did for the lining. So I'm gonna go off camera, make that mark, trim it, and then come back and we will attach H all the way around to this gusset, just like we did with the lining here. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've gone ahead and I have sewn those together and, or as you saw, I sewed them together, but I trimmed that. Now, when you trim that, you will trim some of your interfacing and that's okay. So that's how it looks. We've got it all connected together just like we did with the lining. Now we need to turn this back outside so that the right sides are facing out because we want to top stitch under this connector here. We want to top stitch along this seam on the bottom 
under the connector. So we're going to do that now. And again, this is going to feel a little bit wonky because you've got this tube right now of material. So increase your stitch length for your top stitching. Sorry about my chair making noises. So make sure that seam is pressed down towards the bottom. So there's one side. I'll sh oops, show you how it looks. It's hard to tell, but I've top stitched across under that seam where the connector is. And again, press the seam down towards the bottom. tricky but you saw how I was doing that I was sort of using my hand to also hold the connector out of the way because I don't want to hit the connector but that's how that looks now we can add two rivets if you have rivets or Chicago screws so I'm going to go off camera to do that but she has a measurement given for where to place them now because I've attached my panel in two pieces I don't want to go through the center I want to go off to each side of this seam but if you didn't add yours and you've cut yours on the fold you can add it right in the center of the connector here but I'm going to add mine to each side so I'll be adding two one on each side of the line so I'll go do that and then I'll come back after I have my rivets attached all right, so I've turned my bag so it's wrong sides out after I attached those rivets. So there are my rivets. As I mentioned, I'm going to put two, or I did put two because I have that seam down the center here for joining the A panels together because I used, even though it doesn't look directional, it's a little bit directional because of the way the flower stems are. So I decided to cut it that way. So now we need to do the same thing we did with the lining to attach these side panel H pieces to our gusset. So it's going to be the exact same process. And don't forget that hot tip that Kristen gives in the panel in the pattern, which I've discussed already for cutting into the seam here where H and A are so that you have that extra little bit of extra, how do I explain it, space here to be able to connect these nicely and neatly. And you're just, as I mentioned, clipping into the seam allowance just up to that stitching. So clip these together, take your time, make sure everything is lined up nicely and neatly. <clears throat> now that bottom seam here, the seam where the bottom panel meets the top panel, it's already pressed and top stitched so we don't have to worry about it like we did with the lining. You just want to make sure you ease your material in all the way around and if you've sewn with a really accurate seam allowance you'll notice that it'll fit really perfectly. So just keep adding clips. Now you can snip into the seam allowance to help with the curve of the bag if you want. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the lining and I'm just gonna go for it. Now, again, starting in the center and working your way over to the corners, it's just easier that way than starting in a corner. And don't forget to start and stop where your H and A panel meet. So using the seam allowance given in the pattern, So all the way around. Now remember I have my stabilizer here because when we cut that on an angle I have some stabilizer here. So I am sewing over a little bit of stabilizer and that's okay. Make sure nothing else gets under your presser foot. And just continue sewing around. And I went all the way, again, remember, all the way till where the A and H seam is, where we attach those. So again, same thing on this side. Make sure everything stays. Oh, you can hear Buddy talking to me over there. 
but he's here. So there it is. So you can see I sewed all the way around and I stopped again where that stitching is for A and H where they met. So you can see it better on this side. And yes, I do back stitch a lot just to make sure that it caught. And if you look, when we turn it this way, <coughs> if you turn it out, this is where you can check to see if everything looks good, which it does. It all looks good. It's really pretty. I really, really love how that looks. So pretty. So now we'll do the other side. Same thing. Clip together. Clip the bottoms and then work from the center and go around to the corner. And again, making that snip into the panel, as Kristen suggests, really makes a difference. It really helps get that fabric nice and flat for you to be able to get in that corner nicely. So I'll sew this one on camera and then when I go to do the final two I will go off camera to sew them and then I'll come back and we will continue with constructing the bag because the final part will be to add the lining, do the drop in lining and stitch the bag together. So there it is, it's clipped, so I'm going to start from the center and come down to where that stitching is again and then stitch the other side as well. So starting in the center, or approximately the center, I mean there's no real center mark I guess. <clears throat> And just make sure, oh my chair, just make sure everything is flat as you're coming around that seam. You don't want any puckers. And I can see here, I kind of went off a bit. So I am going to go this way. And again, if there's anywhere that you have to clean up, I don't know if I mentioned this already, go ahead and do that. And by clean up, I mean if you see somewhere like I just did that I kind of went off a little bit, I cleaned it up. Just went back over it. careful not to get anything else stuck underneath so like your handles or anything you want everything out of the way the only thing you want to be sewing right now is that gusset and H So now I have those two sides attached. Now I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to repeat that to attach these two sides here. So the final sides. And then I'll come back and we will add the lining to our bag. All right, so I've turned my exterior right sides out and now we need to put our lining inside. So what we're going to do is take the lining, place it inside, and you want to match up your center points. So I can see where the center is here because I have the crease still. But what I'm going to do is mark it again, just so I can see it. So there's the center point there. And there's the center point there. And we want to line everything up. So we'll now take the double sided tape and we'll remove the paper backing from one side. And then we're going to line up the center marks and place this so that it's just above the stitching that we made on the zipper tape. So just slightly above the stitching. And you're just gonna keep pressing it down all the way around. Now you can use some clips too to help hold everything in place, which I will do. I do that with 
drop-in linings all the time. I just add the extra clips. It helps hold it in place even though I'm using the double-sided tape. The clips just add some extra hold. So keep clipping all the way. Continue clipping and pressing it in place with the tape. The tape helps hold it for you. And you're going just above that stitching that we made here. So where your stitching is, I'm just putting my exterior just above this stitching. I'm just lining it above it, just slightly above it, just to cover that stitching. And when I'm done too, I'm going to use some clips to help give my bag its shape. I'll end up using a lot of clips all around, which will help give the shape that it needs. All right, and then clip it in the center again. Line up your center marks again. Place the tape, remove the tape backing, sorry, and place it with your tape. One of my rivets had fallen off, so I had to replace them while I was off camera. So that was the piece I was looking for. Keep sticking it in place and then we're going to top stitch the opening from the short edge and you can start and stop at the stitches that we made on the short ends and then you can hand stitch to the ends if you want. Now I'm going to try and do it with my machine because hand stitching and I are not friends. So I'm going to try to get down with my machine as far as I can go into the bag. Because like I said, hand stitching and I are not friends. And after all of this work, my hands are sore. Got it clipped in place. The double sided tape is holding it as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of turn this so it is right wrong sides out and I'm going to start in the center and work my way like we did previously to the corner so that I, oh that's coming undone so that I don't have to worry about how far I'm getting into the corner and that's just because I don't want to hand stitch. And you know what, I'm going to back stitch because I'm using a darker fabric, so I'm okay with the back stitching. But you're better to go into the corner and what Kristen has us do is stop when we get to where we did that stitching previously and then you hand stitch the rest of the way. Just, I know I won't be able to hand stitch the rest of the way, so I'm going to stitch into the corner as far as I can go. And that's why I have my bag sort of turned right sides out here. Or right si uh, wrong, uh, lining side out. And I'm going to go into the corner as far as I can, and I'm just checking under my presser foot.
You see, I was able to get into the corner as far as I could. Awesome. We did it. Got into the corner as far as I could with my stitching. Now it's going to be a bit awkward because I'm going to go the other way now, but let's see. I'm just going to turn the whole bag. Lining sides out. So I'm doing this a little bit different, but what she has you do is you start where that previous top stitching was and you go all the way across to the previous top stitching over here and you leave long thread tails and tie them off. But as I mentioned, it's not easy on my hand, so I'm actually going to... I'm just stitching it all the way because I know I can't hand stitch that much. It's just too hard for me, I'm really sorry. And you can hear Buddy crying in the background. Cause just pulling on it a bit too much so if I zip this up just a wee bit there we go it's getting around this zipper pull is the problem Again, you're starting where you stopped with the, the top stitching earlier and you're stitching all the way to the next top stitching that you made. So there's one side all attached, so it's attached to my zipper all the way. So there's one side, now I'm going to do the other side. And I start in the center and I'm going to work my way to that other corner. And yes, I am doing some back stitching, but what you'll want to do is leave long thread tails, tie them off. You can also do what I'm doing, it's just I'm doing what's easier for my hands because of sewing. But again, you sew into the corner, stopping at that top stitching that we previously did. Now, see, I'm on top of that top stitching now, so I'm just following right along on top of it. Again, on the other side, don't forget to leave your long thread tails. Oh, my zipper pull is stuck. There we go. Why was this side so much easier? That's kind of funny. Hi. I don't know if you can all hear her talking to me, but so now we just have to push everything out. We have to turn it all out. Now I'm going to need to add clips to help it give it its shape because there's some areas that just need a bit more shaping. So I will add clips and shape it overnight. And then my bag is all complete.
It is a big bag, as you can see, it's kind of big, which is nice, pretty big bag. Just needs its shaping done. And some pressing, so I'll do that with my iron after. I'll give it some pressing. So my strap is attached, so all I need to do now is take it to my iron, I'll give it a pressing, I'll add my clips everywhere all around these edges here to help hold that or give it some shape here because you can see it's kind of falling into itself. So I'll use my clips, I'll roll out all my seams and I will give it its shape again so that it has this nice rounded edges on the sides and that this has its nice shape on top and it has more of the bag shape that it's supposed to have rather than how it looks now that it's sort of not clipped yet. So again, this is the Carry All Bag by KMG Handmade. We have our awesome zipper that opens up and it opens up wide to open up the bag and then you have your slip pocket and as I was mentioning, great for, you know, if you have something in there that water gets on it, it won't get through because it'll sort of protect that. We have our key minder overlay, our zipper pocket, and then just this really space spacious interior. So you could, you know, this would be great for a gym bag. You could fit you know, a pair of shoes in there probably, maybe a pair of change of gym clothes. It's a really great size bag and it would be a great bag for, you know, a purse for an everyday bag or anything else. So again, this is the Carry All Bag by KMG Handmade. I hope you enjoyed swimming along with me and picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Before you take this out and show it off to the world, please do take lots of pictures and share it on social media. And don't forget to share it in the KMG Bag Makers group on Facebook. And also use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that we can all find your beautiful carry all bags posted on social media and ooh and awe at them with you. Thank you again for sewing along with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye and happy sewing.